Hmm. Thank you, Katrina. We haven't heard that for a while, and it's quite beautiful. Okay, there we go. Let's get a little closer. I want to share with you the best and the worst joke that I could find for Thanksgiving. And the folks at 9 o'clock agreed. In the past couple of weeks, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but there have been turkeys walking across the road back and forth. Just about two or three weeks ago it started. Now, do you know why turkeys walk across the road a couple of times right before Thanksgiving? It's so everybody will think they are chickens. <laughs> Half of you understood that joke. That's good. <clears throat> so as we come together to celebrate Thanksgiving, let's, let's just take a moment and hear the words of the psalmist. Uh, and in the 100th Psalm, it says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into the Lord's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God, it is he or she that has made us, and we are his or hers. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love, her steadfast love, endures forever. And God's faithfulness is true to all generations. And when we hear that God's faithfulness is true to all generations, I just want you to take a second to think about the fact that God is not somebody up there somewhere. God is principle. Is the principle of love. God is the principle of understanding. God is the principle of faith. God is the principle of imagination. And so God is alive and well always in each of us. For we have that love, we have that faith, we have that understanding, and in knowing that, we then can connect with energy, substance, Charles Fillmore called it, and create a world that we want to be a part of and be in. It's up to each of us to do that. And one of the ways that we do that is by sharing our gratitude, by letting others know that we are thankful for what we have. And I was once again looking at the story of the pilgrims landing at Plymouth Rock and settling there. And did you know that they were actually on the way to Jamestown? Yeah, they were on the way to Jamestown, and a storm came up and blew them up north just a little bit into what's now Massachusetts. And so they landed in Massachusetts, and they landed kind of in the fall, and so what they experienced was this disastrous winter uh, where <coughs> William Bradford, the governor, said that, that literally they lost half the people who had come with them in that winter. And they had little in the way of provisions. They had very little to eat. As a matter of fact, what they would do is they would get up in the morning and there would be five kernels of corn for each person twice a day just to get them through that winter. He said they were, building, they were digging more graves than they could build housing for those who were well. And as he talked about that, he still gave thanks for the opportunity to be alive. With everything that was going on around him, he was in the mood to give thanks. Well, the spring came, and, and what happened was, the first thing that happened towards the first of spring, is a ship arrived. Now, this was a ship that was supposed to bring provisions to the colony. And it had 35 passengers. The 35 passengers got off, and there were no provisions. So they had 35 more mouths to feed, in essence. And that's when the Indians stepped in and helped them and supported them. And so they gave thanks for that. And during the summer months, they had, and spring and summer months, they had a bountiful crop, as they said. And a fellow by the name of uh, Edward Winslow made these remarks. 
he said that, um, wait a minute, I'll find him here. He was one of the 50 members of Plymouth who remained living at that time. He said, our harvest of corn came in well, <clears throat> and God be praised. We had a good increase of Indian corn. That means it was giving to them. And our barley crop was also very good. And although our harvests are not always so plentiful as it was at this time with us, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want that we often with that wish that you could be partakers of our plenty. He was writing back home. And so here was this first Thanksgiving <clears throat> where you wonder where pe people get that resilience. But these were truly, like all of us, people of God. They were people who could support one another, speak to one another, and let one another know that they appreciated one another and that through this travesty, they would make it. And they did. And thank God they did. And so as we look back at the beginning, we know that Thanksgiving is a big day for most of us. How many people have plans for Thanksgiving Day? See? Look at there. Big day. I have plans for the day after Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. So Vicki and I are going to sleep in on Thanksgiving morning while you're cooking. But anyway. Uh, so, so Thanksgiving's a big day. You know, in elementary schools, it was always, when I was teaching elementary school, it was a big day, and we planned for it, and we would have different activities that would lead up to Thanksgiving. Well, there was a Mrs. Klein a while back who was teaching uh, the first, second, and third grade, and she asked children to draw a picture of what they were thankful for and what they expected for Thanksgiving. And so, as you would expect, some pictures came of a banquet table filled with food, even though these young people were not living in an area where food was plentiful. There were pictures coming back of family together celebrating Thanksgiving. There were a lot of pictures of turkeys. And there was one picture. I'm not talking about people, by the way, turkeys. Okay? There was one person. That was funny. But anyway, uh, there, was, <laughs> there was one person, uh, Doug, little boy, who drew a picture of a hand. And he was amazingly talented. It wasn't just, you know, this kind of thing like I would do. It was a real picture of what looked like a real hand. And the children saw this. And so what the teacher did is raised it up, or held it up, and said, what do you imagine from this hand? And one child said, well, I imagine that's somebody in a medical profession who's helping somebody. That's a hand of a doctor. Another child says, that's the hand of my mother helping me out. Another child said, that's the hand of a policeman who helps us out in our community. Another said, that's the hand of God working with us and through us. Didn't use those words, but they were saying. So the children all gave their reports, and then they went to another assignment. While they were at the other assignment, the teacher, Mrs. Klein, went over to Douglas and said, Douglas? What is that to hand of, really? And he said, it's your hand that's always there for me, helping me when I go out to the playground. I would say she was pretty thankful for that opportunity and for what happened. Now, one of the things we're going to do this morning is, you know, I know some of you it, it kind of probably said he's going to talk about money this morning, and I could, but I'm not going to. Uh, well, I'll mention it in a few minutes, but anyway. Uh, what I really want to do is look at the idea of abundance and giving and sharing, of receiving from others. So as we do that, one of the things that I want to do is I want to share with you some corn. And I want each of you to take a piece of corn as it goes around. Don't eat it until later. Don't hold it too, too close together because it will get all of your hands, okay? So take a piece of corn each, please. And as you receive this corn, thank you, <laughs> even start now about thinking about one thing in your life that represents this kernel of corn as abundance. Something has happened to you in the last year, last month, last week, that you appreciate and that you feel made you feel abundant 
something that has happened in your life that you say, thank you, Spirit, for making me aware of the good in that. And I'll give you a story that has happened to Vicki and I. In the last four years, Vicki and I have been blessed five times in a very unique way. It just happened the other day, about two weeks ago. We were at a restaurant across town, and we got ready to go. And the waitress said, I, I said, you know, bring us our ticket. She said, I can't do that. And I kind of looked at her, and she said, because somebody's already paid for your meal. We were in California just a few years back at what they call the egg yolk. And if, if you ever get to San Diego, go there. It's a wonderful breakfast place. But anyway, we had eight of us. And granddaddy <clears throat> had volunteered to pay for all eight of us. And this is like going to a, an expensive dinner, okay? We got ready to go. The same thing happened. Sir, I can't give you a bill. The tip and the bill has already been paid. And I look around, and I don't know anybody in California other than my kids, and I said, do you see anybody here you know? And they go, no. Okay. The other day when I was at the restaurant, I looked around to see if one of you guys were there so I could thank you. Hint, hint. And so anyway, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, but, you know, i got to tell you, and I'm sure it's happened to some of you, that it is experience that just makes your heart feel good. You feel warm. You know you're alive, and you know some kind of way a stranger cares in such a way that they just say, here, here's a gift. Now, I would like for you to have this opportunity, and where, is our mic, where are our mics that work? Are any of these on, Nancy? Testing, one, two, three. Test, nope. There you go, thank you. Testing. Testing one, two, three. Oh. We'll, we'll have to rehearse more often during the service, okay? <clears throat> oh, well, I can have two. Okay, thank you. I like that. Two, two at a time. Thank you. All right. Uh, now, who would like to share with us some point of abundance that they feel really good about that's happening? We have this person right back here in the back. There you go, my friend. Love those suspenders. Thank you, it's Kelly. Kelly, that's right. Thank you, Kelly. So uh, my birthday was Thursday, and uh, I thank you. And uh, I'm in a ballet class at VCU because I could audit classes for free. And the teacher, whose grandma in the, nut, in the Nutcracker, takes us to watch the Richmond Ballet Company, the professional company, do their morning workout two days uh, at the end of the semester. And that was Thursday and Friday. So Friday, I was there Thursday, and then Friday when I went, the uh, Igor Antonov, who was formerly their premier dancer, uh, teaches now. And he was the teacher for the company for that day. And in between the bar work and the floor work, he looked at me and said very loudly, how you doing today? And I said, swell. And I said, I was here yesterday was my birthday. And I was here, and that was the best birthday present I could have had. So it's incredible to watch them. And so the company laughed, and they liked that because I was appreciating them. And at the end of the uh, floor work, they gather around the pianist uh, and the teacher, and they thank him. And then all of a sudden, the piano started playing Happy Birthday. <laughs> and the ballet company sang me Happy Birthday. All and right. then they came over and gave me hugs. Thank you. Oh, gosh. Sounded like a Unity experience, like you went to Unity Church, okay? Here we go. Debbie. Thank you. Or Joyce. Or both. Okay. <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> and I just wanted to share that I have not thought I would sell my home. I was going to stay in it until... I, I made my next assignment. And um, all that amounted to is someone called at about 20 of six, five, now four weeks ago, told me that the house that I was looking for was available. So it's a condo all on one floor, beautiful with 
cathedral ceilings and all that good stuff. So I am super grateful because it's surrounded by woods and it's beautiful. Mm. And that's just, now the next thing I'll be super grateful for, you all see my house sold. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Richard, for letting thank me you. speak here. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else would like to speak? There we go. Either one or both of you, okay? But, it, but at a time. <laughs> well, I always thought we were one, but, you know, sometimes I don't claim her. Um, so uh, I'm thankful that 47 years ago and I think 12 days, no, I don't know, I don't know, man, I was chosen to live this life. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned it at the, the first service, but I think it's worth repeating. And um, I had a dream, like Martin Luther King. Um, but when I was younger, I had a dream of how I wanted my family to be. And I have the family now. It's not exactly how the dream was, but it's, it's exactly how I want my family to be. And um, I think with I'm thankful each day I come home, to come home to the family that I have now, um, with our ups and downs and everything else that we go through, failures and good times. I, I'm always just very thankful. And so it's not one moment or one day or one story. It's, it's every day that I'm thankful that I get to come home to such a wonderful family. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a lot of things to be thinking about abundance, but I'm just grateful for being able to be here and know that I am free, the liberty. That's the state of gratitude. And bringing my sister-in-law for the first time, the unity, um, to uh, have service with us, but just the abundance that comes from within, not from having things, because I think last year, I shared my testimony uh, at the burning bush that I'm debt free totally, and I continue to remain debt free. And that's, but it's in gratitude, not in the things. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Congratulations. Okay. Who else? So we have people who haven't experienced anything. I'm, I'm shaming you into this. Okay. Just want you to know that. Yes. Right back here in the back. Thank you. And then you'll be next after her, okay? Okay, okay, I'll come back. Thank you. There we go. How you doing? Good. Um, oh. I, um, so I work two jobs, just like that's a normal thing that I do. And I recently lost my second job, like my side gig. I was really stressed out about it um, and where I was going to make up the money from. But I just started driving for Uber, and it's been really fun so far. <laughs> 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 talking to a bunch of strangers and crazy drunk people it's actually been a good time so um i'm thankful that god has provided for me even when i was stressed out it worked out thank you thank you we're happy for you you know eric butterworth is a writer and was a unity minister he's passed away many years ago but he said that Kyrie, and he was in new york city he said a Kyrie came into his church one day and said i got to talk to you and he was all upset and he said what's going on he said, I just lost my job. Eric Butterworth said, congratulations. You got another opportunity. And sure enough, a few weeks later, he got a better opportunity, OK? So thanks for sharing that with us. Anybody else? Oh, that's right. I forgot just about. I did forget. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Usually, um, I don't really do a lot of talking. But I really want to say that <clears throat> I'm blessed because my husband died um, about five, six years ago. I'm real happy because when I met him, he was just his sister. <laughs> and uh, I'm laughing because um, she was really his pet until I came into her life. But she was kind of unhappy because I had taken her brother away from her. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thankful, too, that 
my husband and I was married, I mean, 54 years. 54 wow. years. And now I'm sick and he died. So she's here now, help taking care of me. And I'm blessed because she looks out for me. Good. Yeah. You've got a great person doing that. You know that, okay? Thank you. Anybody else? Right here. Right here. There you go. Um, I'm grateful to be reunited with my daughter that I hadn't spoken to for 10 years. Oh, wow. Way to go. I kind of know how that feels. I went without talking with my son for about three years. Um, and it's a difficult thing. But you're reunited, and it just brings all kinds of wonderful memories back, okay? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm grateful for my family is growing. Jake is getting married to Un Young Jang. And they're coming here, and they're going to get legally married in Korea, and then they're going to come here and have a ceremony sometime in February. And uh, he asked me two nights ago, I, I said, how can I help you? Let me know what I can do for you. And after about a month of thinking about it, he said, can you just take care of it, please? <laughs> 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 I didn't want to be an interfering, overbearing person and force any ideas on him. So uh, it was nice to have him just hand it over in a way because um, it's just completely impractical for them to plan it. So I'll be asking you some questions and some other people around here, Katrina and other folks, okay. some questions. <laughs> Good. February. Thank you. Congratulations. Every morning when I get up, I make a decision how my day is going to be, not how I want it to be, but how it will be. And every morning I wake up and I decide that I'm going to be grateful. And every morning I am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, here we go. There you go, young man. Now, you didn't lose your job. Did you? No, go ahead. <laughs> I'm grateful that now if I uh, ever need a ride, I can call Elise and... <laughs> um, on a serious note, uh, I'm grateful that uh, I have formed kind of an extended family among some fellow music fans. Um, and next weekend, the day after Thanksgiving, I'll be working all day on Thanksgiving itself, but... My actual celebration will be driving to Ohio and renting a house for the weekend and seeing my favorite band with a bunch of friends from all over the country. Wow. Um, and that'll be a first for me, so it'll be, it'll be a really nice reunion that I'm mm -hmm. grateful for. Where in Ohio? Uh, Columbus. All right. <laughs> Big university there. Thank you. Okay, guys. Well, thank you. Um, now, let me ask you, how do you feel? That feel good? All right. You feel what? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I better put this back up here. I'm getting in trouble. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the other day I was sitting and uh, decided that I should write down all the things that I'm thankful for about Unity of Richmond, okay? And as I sat there... <clears throat> <laughs> I'm, I'm thankful for new members. I'm thankful for visitors. I'm thankful for our audiovisual team in the back. I'm thankful for the bookstore revitalization for Christmas. I'm thankful for, <clears throat> um, what is that I'm thankful for? Oh, uh, Silent Unity, okay. I'm thankful for our silent auction. I'm thankful for our um, spring raffle. I'm thankful for all the volunteers, especially around Caritas, uh, where we house folks who are temporary homeless. And I just want you to know that we have over 760 hours of volunteer time by about 76 people in that one week, just one week alone at Unity of Richmond, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm thankful for Unity Churches in Virginia. You don't know how much they support me and have supported me and, and Vicki in the past, and we appreciate that. Unity of Rappahannock, which is our satellite ministry, is still going, still happening, and we are being blessed by them, and they bless us. Live streaming, as I mentioned earlier, 
Uh, we've, we've really had a, a big boost in live streaming recently. And so for those who are listening, thank you. And uh, again, come see us. Um, I'm really thankful for our annual planning team. Most of you don't know it, but our seven or eight people here in the church get together and we plan and lay out all that we're going to do, hopefully next year, and try to plan ahead. Um, then I'm also thankful for our um, <coughs> communications folks uh, and for those folks who make things happen. I'm thankful for our mail that comes in. Now, we have an unusual mail system here. It comes in at 5 to 6 o'clock every night. So it gives us, a, gives us overnight to prepare. Um, for our spiritual direction team, I know some of you are involved in that, not the team, but, but spiritual direction group, and there have been a couple of those. Uh, for uh, hospital visitation, many of you do that. I might mention to you that I was at the hospital on Saturday. Bill Mason, many of you know, uh, is going to have a um, heart surgery, but what they're doing is they are re-implanting a new pacemaker. And it's going to take, it takes eight hours to do that because they have to take everything out and then put it back in. Uh, but, you know, I, I went in expecting to see this sick man. And he's sitting there watching TV and laughing and joking. And he shared with me how grateful he is to have the support of this ministry and also how grateful he is that he has the right doctors doing the work, and he's convinced of that because the doctor who had done the earlier work had passed away. Uh, I'm thankful also... Uh, for our weekly anonymous prayer team. I'm thankful for, i got a bunch of things in here, okay, uh, for um, <clears throat> the men of unity and the women of unity. I'm thankful for all the decorations that are done around here. I'm thankful for the landscaping that takes place around here and the work that goes on. I'm thankful also, uh, just listen to all this stuff, okay? <laughs> I'm thankful also uh, for... Uh, you know, when you write on toilet paper, it's really hard to read. Uh, but anyway, uh, for the special things you guys have done. This year, we raised enough money to replace all the windows upstairs. We raised enough extra, extra money to uh, put in partial air conditioning, and we have about $8,000 left over for air conditioning, and you will hear more about that soon after the first of the year because uh, we have more to go. But we've been blessed with that opportunity. Uh, I am thankful for consistent givers. And as you know, we've got a little campaign going right now to ask you to consider being a consistent giver at Unity of Richmond. And that way we can do our planning for next year. And it is not a pledge. It is an opportunity to sign up and say, yes, I will give consistently so that the money comes in monthly in a way that supports this ministry in a beautiful way. And we thank you for that. Um, we have, a, we have the, the veterans... Uh, center that is here, uh, and we are blessed with many volunteers, many of you who volunteer there. We're blessed with uh, the, um, our, <coughs> our recovery groups that meet here. We have about four recovery groups now meeting here on a regular basis. We're blessed with our yoga and unity group. We're blessed with uh, our counters and our greeters and uh, our ushers. We're so just so blessed. These are just some of the things that go on here, okay? And as I sat there thinking, I couldn't remember all of them. Uh, but mostly, uh, oh, there's a succession team that's been working this year. And that doesn't mean I'm leaving this month or next month or next year, okay? It just means the succession team is planning for me to leave someday. Uh, and then the finance team, the board of trustees, our music program. Wow, people just put in hours on that, and we appreciate that, both our professional musicians and our, our guests, okay? Uh, the staff here, um, they're actually, when you count people who come in regularly as volunteers, and when you count bookkeepers and all those kind of things, we have eight staff people here part-time. And so we're getting lots of support, and we appreciate that. I appreciate it in particular, okay? Uh, our prayer chaplains, I thank them, each and every one, those who, from the past, those who are serving now. Uh, I, thank for the, I am thankful for the gala dinners. I, you know, they cost me quite a bit of money, but I go to all of them I can, and I'm really thankful because they are a wonderful fellowship opportunity as well as the food is great. Uh, I am thankful for our raffles that go on, the tree, uh, the chili cook-off, um, and our Brunswick stew. I am really thankful for special classes that take place. People during the year offer their time and provide a special class, either around art or around other opportunities 
uh, that they're experts in, and we appreciate that. The prosperity classes I appreciate. And I can't read the last one. So anyway, uh, but, I, but I'm thankful for it, uh, whatever it is, okay? But I just wanted you to know that this is, you know, just sitting and writing down, and I did it at my desk, by the way, uh, <laughs> sitting and writing down uh, that, that this, is just off the, this is off the top of my head, and this is you. This is each of you, and I am so thankful for this community. I am thankful for the love that you show for one another. I am thankful for the peace that you keep here as you come in. I'm thankful for the dialogue that takes place here. True dialogue where we can disagree, but we disagree with love and understanding one another. And we come to a place where we know what is ours to do as spirit guides and directs us. That's powerful. People feel that. People know that. And that's what you are. You're just beautiful. You're wonderful. And so I thank you for who you are. And as we close, what I'd like to do is I close. I'm a little late, I know, but we're going to eat anyway. Um, I'd just like to take a minute to pray with you. And so, I am thankful to experience each of you. I am thankful for this coming Thanksgiving. I am thankful for the healing that takes place in this congregation and throughout unity and the world. I am thankful for the growth that we are experiencing individually and collectively. I am saying thank you. Thank you, Spirit, for reminding us of who we are and what we are. So that as our lives are transformed, what we're really doing is coming back and remembering that we are God in action. Remembering that we are a demonstration of God. Remembering that we are not separated, but we are one. And so as we come to this Thanksgiving day, I give thanks. I share love. And I see the Christ in each of you. And so it is. Amen. And so if I...